Kevin Brett. Here. Lori Collins. Here. Cheryl Glowark here. Chad King. I'm here. Ray Costain. Ray? Ray Costain? I know he's here. He appears to be muted on my screen. Hello, I'm here. And Dan Miller. I'm not sure that Dan's here. Okay, we'll, we'll move forward. Um, thank you all for attending our, um, our meeting virtually here. And as I said before the, uh, the zoning hearing meeting, um, this is our first attempt at, at having a virtual meeting like this. And we appreciate your patience as we try to get through this. Um, I am going to open the floor up to comments for, from visitors. But I want to do this in a manner, given the circumstances that we have, that we will place a time limit. I'm going to put a three-minute time limit on comments from the floor. And uh, if you are going to speak, I need you to state your name and address, and, um, and then I will open it to your comments. So uh, without delay, uh, do we have any comments from visitors? We'll need to un they'll need to unmute. Going once, going twice, no comments from visitors. I'll proceed with the uh, meeting uh, business. I need a motion to approve the March 9th, 2020 regular meeting minutes as submitted. So moved. Please state who that was. Bruce. Bruce. Nick Krzyzewski seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> That motion passes. I need a motion to approve the April 2020 bill list. I'll move, Joe. I second. second. Nino's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the April 17th, April 24th, May 1st, and May 8th, 2020 payrolls. So move, Bruce. <laughs> Second. Bruce, Nick. Do I have a second? Uh, Nick has a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Motion passes. I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2020 03, authorizing an action plan in response to the recent outbreak of COVID 19 coronavirus. So moved, BJ. I, a second. I second. You know, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to adopt resolution number 2020-04, a resolution certifying the Bridgeville Borough will be applying to the DCNR for grant funds to be utilized for the Chartiers Park upgrade or upgrade project. Total project costs $690,201. Joe move, so move, I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the request of partial payment number three, the backflow preventer contract phase two for Cirrus Enterprise in the amount of $10,020.60 for work completed to date. The estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer Brett. So move, Bruce. Second, Nick. All in favor? Mr. Chairman, I have to abstain because it was work done in front of my location. And I'm very happy they did a good job, but I'd rather uh, abstain from the, from the motion. Okay, noted that uh, Councilman Petroselli has abstained from this vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to approve the following real estate tax refund due to a change in the assessment as requested by the real estate tax collector. A copy of the official change order has been attached to the request. This is for year 2019 for lot block 255-P-179 in the amount of $440.80 to Susan and Dennis Bott at 115 Greenwood Place in Bridgeville 15017. 
I'll nope. move. Bruce, I'll second. second. Nick second. Nick in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No, if I'm a, I should oppose or I should abstain. That's my brother. So. Okay, BJ noted uh, that BJ uh, Schneider is abstained from the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. The consideration of the Borough Council regarding the conditional use application of Tamara Padgelek, also known as Pittsburgh Pets at Home for the property located at 131 Washington Avenue. Remarks of public hearing was held on April 13th at 2020 or 2020 at 6.30 p.m. to receive citizen comments. I will open this for a summary review by uh, Solicitor McDermott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman and President and members of council. Um, I have uh, circulated for consideration by council um, a proposed um, motion uh, that I would recommend um, would be suitable if uh, council is so inclined to grant approval of this application. As I indicated um, uh, according to the standards that were discussed in the hearing. If you are so inclined, it would be appropriate to uh, in, uh, include uh, the following sort, uh, sorts of conditions. And I would recommend, uh, and you have before you a, a, a draft document that I've circulated, um, and the motion would recommend approval of the application uh, subject to uh, the following, A, compliance with all applicable federal, state, and local laws uh, regarding the operation of that business, including the county uh, air quality emissions certifications that were alluded to during the hearing, uh, B, compliance with the approved site plan, and that's the site plan as it previously approved uh, by Borough Council on June 10th, 2019. Um, C, with regard to um, parking, um, just and also by way of information, noting that the approval in their occupancy permit is uh, conditioned upon compliance with the parking as presented and approved. And as such, the lawful maximum occupancy for this conditional use is approved. Be subject to the owner at all times not having more patrons, visitors, invitees than may be accommodated by that number of parking spaces approved by this matter. Uh, condition D uh, also is kind of a note uh, that no other use or occupancy other than this pet crematorium business is approved and such that any separate occupancy on the property by a separate user business, and for example, if it'd be a separate uh, business by this present owner or by lease to a, another party would be subject to separate application and approval, including adherence to all separate parking criteria. At the same time, making note that nothing herein is intended to limit the applicant owner from utilizing the existing spaces within the building, including the third floor space, as an administrator of the board space, so long as those uses are subordinate to and accessory to the principal use as a pet crematorium. Um, e is uh, 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 compliance with exterior lighting plan. I would uh, amend that on the fly and have that include lighting and landscaping plan as commented on during the hearing by the engineer and others. F, uh, noting uh, to the extent not previously approved, signage uh, would be subject to separate application and approval for that permitting. And second, and, and G would be a, a catch-all that uh, adherence to all of those foregoing conditions are a, a uh, condition of this approval. And finally, G, advising the applicant that they have 30 days from this uh, date of this decision uh, in which to um, uh, voice any objections to those conditions, uh, failing which they will consider to be accepted. And I would recommend if, you, if, if uh, uh, council, if any council member is uh, 
uh, inclined to do so to make a motion uh, specifically subject to the, the conditions A through H as set forth in the proposed motion to approve application for conditional use dated April, 20, uh, April 13, 2020. Do I have a motion? Lost, so moved. I, Nick Shelsky second. Second by Nick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept and pay any commission due the March 2020 real estate tax collector. Jover, do you see a move? Bruce seconded. Who seconded? Bruce. And fine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the February 2020 Treasurer's Report. Joe Verduce, you'll move. Nino, Bruce. I second. Nino, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the March 2020 police report. So moved. Bruce. Nick, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I need a motion to accept the April 2020 zoning report. So cross moved. So moved. Nino, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Just under comment uh, to the public, these um, have been provided to us uh, electronically as well. So we've had uh, a chance to review these reports uh, prior to tonight's meeting. Uh, committee reports, administration, EJ. Um, Bill, you have no, uh, no other comments other than um, since the ALOM conference has been canceled, they are working to provide um, local and uh, elect officials essential resources, education and advocacy during the pandemic, um, as well as um, educational opportunities um, for the boroughs to continue their professional development um, as it becomes available. Um, as you can see, we're doing the Zoom meetings in an attempt to, um, while we're under shelter in place order, in an attempt to keep things moving. Um, there's uh, the work continues on the revision of the um, personnel handbook and the municipal building safety project that we had talked about um, is currently on hold. There are talks that are going to begin with the uh, with the engineering firm when possible. And that's it. Thank you, BJ. Uh, finance, Joe Berducci. Uh, we had a meeting on uh, last week, I think it was Saturday uh, or Friday. Um, we had a discussion just to find out uh, how things were going in regards to the uh, finances with the, the borough and everything seems to be fine. Um, we had some discussions if uh, what would we do if uh, we needed to do other things. If there was a change, this was extended for a longer period of time. So we had had some scenarios, had some discussions, and it, it was a it was a real good discussion among the group uh, um, that we had with Bruce and uh, Lori and and Nick. Um, other than that, everything's fine. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Joe Colosimo. Uh, thanks, Bill. Uh, real quick, uh, the bids for McLaughlin Park Phase 2 is supposed to be open on May 12th, hopefully. If they have to be pushed back due to the virus, uh, talking to Lori and the engineer, the scope of work on the park shouldn't take that long. <coughs> the work to be done. So hopefully, if it doesn't get back somewhat, we'll still be able to get the work done this year. Uh, Permitting processes are going on down at Chartiers Park. We approved the uh, one for the grant for the work down there, so hopefully that'll keep moving along. And a little note, uh, we had a little issue up at Cook School Park. One of our residents chopped down a very large tree and it fell on the first place dug out. The damage was very minimal. Uh, guys were up to check it out. There's a little two or three tears in the rubber membrane. 
top of the roof. The one you got it was a little bit bent, but it's still functional. So Joe, I'm going to have to apologize. I can't hear you. You had said something about a tree, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, the tree came down on the dugout on first base side up to Cook School. Very little damage. The uh, membrane on the roof had two or three tears in it, and the one gutter has a little dent in it. Uh, that's no big deal. The roof shouldn't be too big of a deal. Well, Lori told me the uh, resident called that weekend when it happened and said he would take care of any damages. Uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. So other than that, I'm good. That's all I have. Is it our tree uh, or uh, the uh, residents? It's our property, from what I understand. Okay. Well, I'm sure Lori and the uh, engineer were looking on that. So I appreciate their attention. Thank you. Public Works is up there like that Monday and they got a lot of there and it's all chopped up and we're good. That's all. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Uh, Public Works, Nino Petrotelli. But thank you, Mr. Chairman. Due to the COVID-19, uh, with Lori's recommendation as well as mine, we sort of have them uh, a little off. They're working and they're not working. We call them anytime we need them and they're cutting the grass and that's that's what we do. When are we going to release them in a full time or altogether? We can't tell you that. We try to keep them separate as much as we can and Lori's and I, we stand on that. Uh, the grass is cut. I see the parking lot over the building there. It's been uh, working on it. And Lori, maybe I see that some of the public work, they're driving together. I would consider for them to drive together in a front seat. Obvious, they can't go in the back seat. No, that isn't any. But at least they wear mask and glove till all this is over. And right. if they can stay as distance as much as possible, mm -hmm. follow the law, uh, we, Lori, we really appreciate it. You can have that uh, note to them, please. I no problem. It. I've Thank you. I've instructed them not to drive together along with their other instructions. Yes, um, as, I, we're, as we're and I've also instructed them to choose one vehicle and only drive that vehicle and sanitize it before they get in and after they leave it. So I will make sure that I um, reiterate that to them tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate the sanitation. I knew that and I think it was a very good idea. I noticed they sanitize the uh, the equipment and the tool they touch, and this is what just what we got to do. So you and I will stay on. You just let me know if you need any recommendation from me, Lori. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Sure, no problem. I'm done, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, thanks, Nino. Uh, public welcome. safety, Bruce Gallarducci. Yes, I. I would like to make a recommendation for um, the position of emergency management. Um, as we move forward, uh, the Public Safety Committee has talked about this, and we come up with the name of Mike Tolmer for that position. Um, there's an application process, which if we approve this, then the applica application can be filled out and then sent, and the governor has to approve that. So. At this point, I'd like to make a motion to have Mike Tomer take the position of public safety coordinator. A second. A second. A quick question. Uh, should something like that, does that have to be advertised or no? No, it does not. Okay. It does not. Um, and I do have the form that needs to be filled out and submitted to um, the state, so I can uh, take care of that. Thank you, Lori. 
So Bruce, Bruce made a motion and Nick second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Anything else, Bruce? That's all I have, Mr. President. All right, thanks. Just before we get into uh, the rest of the report, let me uh, make a notation that we did have an executive session prior to the uh, zoning hearing meeting at 6 p.m. tonight for a legal matter. Okay, with that, uh, Mayor, Mrs. Mayor Betty Copeland. I'm extremely grateful for the restaurants that are still making it possible for people to enjoy meals by their curbside service. Mm -hmm. And also grateful to the fire department for the joy that they brought to the children in the community on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Police Chief Chad King. Thank you, Council President. Um, you've been provided with a report. It's been pretty quiet, fortunately. Um, obviously, with the coronavirus issue going on, the academy has closed down, so that has impeded my ability to even start to put together a list of candidates to fill our full-time position. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for is we still have the blessing in the future as soon as as soon as possible, once things open back up, that I can begin the testing process, advertise the test, and, and uh, whatnot to get our service list completed. Yeah, I, I um, you know, we, we filled that uh, position on the Civil Service Commission, so we have a, a full board there. And, um, you know, once you're ready to move forward, I'm sure that the Civil Service Commission and Public Safety will work with you to, uh, to, to do so. Okay. That all, Chief? Yes, that's all I have. Uh, solicitor Tom McDermott. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members of council and the mayor. I have uh, submitted my written report to you. I have nothing to add to that unless you have further questions other than to note um, how proud, actually, I believe the borough and everybody from uh, the president and the administrative committee and council as a whole, uh, manager and assistant manager on Don who have been working closely together and were probably ahead of the curve on many in acting proactively and in an ongoing manner in a fluid manner as the situation continues um, for the sake of our uh, community and each other uh, during this process and we've been uh, providing guidance as we've gone along in that and that and uh, ready, willing, and able to do so. But just wanted to uh, uh, let you folks know, having had experience in many different communities, how uh, proactive and uh, 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 that you've all been on this. Thank you, Tom. And appreciate your input and guidance through this as well. Thank you. Uh, Borough Engineer, Kevin Brett. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I did, or we did submit in our report dated April 8th, and the only new item I have is um, there is two grants, um, the GEDTF, um, which uh, you were very successful the last round. They're out early this year, and um, we have both applications ready. One's for the Warner Avenue retaining wall. Uh, $750,000 project, $374,000 grant. The other one would be for the PRP plan, um, and it's for water treatment units, and that's a $350,000 project, $137,000 grant. Um, we can submit those applications without the resolutions, but uh, it does require two resolutions to be followed up. Um, they do have this out about three months earlier than before, but we do believe they're going to award early this year. And other than that, I think everything else has been reported on. I can address any questions. Any questions for the engineer? So do we made, do we need to make those in a form of a motion at this time? If you could. Do they need to be individual, uh, Tom? I so move. No, you can do them collectively if you wish. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. So Adam, I have a motion from Nino to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bruce. Bruce will make a motion for them collectively for the um, grants that the engineers uh, set forth before us. Do I have a second? 
I shall move. I mean, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Uh, Fire Chief Ray Custain. Chief still here? Yes. Is he muted? Ray? I'm here. Any comments, Ray? Hello? There you yeah. go. There you go. I apologize. Uh, call volume for the month of March is down a little bit. Uh, we had 26 calls, which we're, we're grateful for the reduction. Um, just to let everyone know, our fire gear uh, is still on back. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, I do want to, on behalf of the Bridgeville Fire Department, would like to thank Devlin Robinson for his uh, donation of N95 masks for our folks. Uh, our PPE needs were met with that, uh, and we have no additional needs in regards to PPE at this time. So. That is all I have. I uh, hope everyone continues to stay healthy. Thanks, Chief. Um, Southbridge EMS, is Dan here? He is, yes. I am here. Any comments, Dan? Um, no, you got my report. Um, it's actually been surprisingly slow with the COVID thing going on. Um, we're wondering if the surge will kick up soon and we'll get busier. Um, so that that's a good thing that people aren't getting sick. The the unfortunate thing is that's how we're generating revenue to pay the bills, and we're not running calls to generate revenue. So that's going to be a problem for us in the future. But uh, for right now, we're we're ready. We have enough PPE for the responding crews, and we're going to sit back and see what happens. Is Thanks, anything Dan. with uh, excuse me, Ray? Is anything with the? Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, from the EMS. Is any uh, thing you could do with the stimulation as far as the, the ambulance service? I mean, it look like the government is helping a lot of this situation. Uh, some like that, the firemen and the EMS, I believe that somebody should put a, should put a notice uh, and push that a little bit for some kind of stimulation. I mean, that's like a, it's like business. It's losing money, just like any other business. I'm ju just suggestion, if there is any way somebody could do something with the federal government or whatever, just suggestion. Yeah, well, we we have applied for the programs that we're eligible for, um, but we're not really sure we'll, where those will end up. Um, you know because we're fighting for some of that money with the whole nation. So we're not really sure, you know, how we will fare with those applications. Well, they should consider that very uh, strongly. But if you're already doing it, so just let's hope that sooner they, they do something about it. Thank you. Nino, I did see there is some, there are some legislators talking about uh, funding for uh, volunteer fire departments and EMS uh, personnel. Uh, I don't know how many, you know, what kind of legs that has at this point, but there, there is some consideration and, and talk okay, about good. that. Good. Thank yeah. you. Dan, I'd like to thank you as well for your, uh, your reports that you've been keeping us up to speed on uh, your, how you guys are addressing the, um, the COVID situation. And, and uh, you know, while I'm disappointed you guys aren't, or making money, I'm happy that, that it hasn't really uh, been overwhelming you guys either. So. Thank you. Um, is Mary Weiss on Bridgeville Historical Society? No, she's not, but she gave me a brief report that I can give to you, Bill. This is BJ. Sure, thanks, BJ. She wanted to report that they were very successful at selling the Martha Washington shoe sign. That's mm -hmm. the one found in the attic of the Darby Way building uh, demo that was um, done recently. Um, they made a substantial profit off of that. So she's pretty excited. Wants everyone to know that they canceled the bake sale in May and they will decide about June at a later date. But that's all she had. And I also have a report from uh, Ray Ehrenholtz from the library. Thank you. Um, he updates that the employees have been paid the end of March, but Ben was applying for federal loans. Um, he also updated um, a, 
about the lower Chartier's watershed. That was the creek cleanup that, that was presented to the last um, the last meeting. Obviously, things have been postponed. However, Ray and his wife, Lori, Aaron Holtz, they walked from Boyce Road to Chartier's Park and noticed there was very little debris. Um, however, the most debris they saw was centered around Chartier's the Chartier's Park area on the banks as opposed to in the water. Um, last report, the um, creek cleaning was after Ivan, it was 2004, um, but they still plan to do the water test, do the cleanup uh, at a later date when possible. Thank you, BJ. You're welcome. Uh, let's see, are we at, uh, anyone here from the parking authority? Okay, how about the uh, Planning Commission? Nothing from Planning Commission? We do have a few folks on. If they, I don't know if they have. It, my, I'm here. Um, I don't know if Dale, I thought Dale was here too, but we didn't have a meeting last month, and we'll probably, I don't know if we're going to try to do a Zoom meeting uh, this month or not. That's all I have. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mr. Manager, Lori, Lori Collins. Um, I provided my written report. If anyone has any questions or comments, I'll be glad to answer them. That's hey, Bill. all. Yes. Bill, um, Dale looked like he was going to say something. Okay. Go ahead, Dale. Yeah, sorry. It took me a little while to figure out how to unmute the mic. <laughs> a little te technical error on this end. Um, as far as the Planning Commission goes, um, we've been working on... Um, we didn't have a meeting in March, as, as Mike indicated. Um, we're going to, uh, I think we're going to try the Zoom thing uh, for April. And uh, we've been working on uh, reviewing the comprehensive plan and trying to come up with a, a short list of, of doable projects. Um, and uh, a, a long list as far as, you know, maybe, maybe something that's going to take, you know, some five to ten year planning type projects. So uh, that's where things are at right now. Thanks, Dale. I appreciate that. Appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, we've heard, we've had uh, Lori's report. Anything under old business? Old business. Under new business, I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the um, uh, it's been a couple of weeks now. We had uh, some water rise. We had a pretty good rain on a Saturday and. Um, some very, very minor flooding uh, down behind the beer distributor. Some water got into the one building but did not get very high. The, the encouraging thing was that we were observing the water flow and it was, it was flowing very fast and, and clean. We didn't see too much debris uh, coming through. Um, the, one of the, the, the one drain seemed to get backed up uh, with some leaves and debris uh, where it would come out of if it breached over the uh, Hill and, and the public works came out and, and uh, cleared that away and the water went down uh, really quick. So uh, that's an encouraging sign uh, that we're, you know, some of the things we're doing is, uh, is having some impact on the way the water is getting through town. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention is the Bridgel Chamber of Commerce has been doing webinars uh, with the different communities uh, surrounding us. We had an opportunity to participate in, in one this past week where um, where we've had you know, we're talking about what we're doing with COVID nineteen or the COVID nineteen, how the administration is being run, the police department, whatnot. That has been recorded. Uh, Joe, is it? It's up on the chamber's site, I believe, right? Yep, on their Facebook page as well. It's on our Facebook page. On theirs, the on chamber's theirs, okay. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, so if you if you had, I know there were a couple people I heard tried to get in and they were on standby and actually did not get in. So you may have an opportunity to watch that webinar um, on on the Chamber's site. So uh, they will be holding, I think, Carnegie and Heidelberg and Scott in the future. Uh, they did yeah. Southfit and Scott and uh, hey, it's a great opportunity. Bill, um, Scott Township is Wednesday and Carnegie is Thursday. Yeah, check the chamber site if you're interested in, in seeing, you know, how uh, what the other communities are doing. I'd encourage you to uh, log in and I think you have to register, right, Joe? I, I, Correct. Yeah, that's some people hadn't registered and, and uh, weren't able to get in. So pre-register if you want to see it. Uh, anything else under new, uh, new business? 
I do see a chat. Let me see. Uh, okay, um, Tom McDermott. I need uh, Tom. Um, yeah, sorry, looks like you went to floor, Tom. Yeah, it doesn't require any new. I just wanted to make a clarification. I was concerned that I may have in the in the narrative of the motion indicated that there were that they had a, a more spaces than they actually need that I uh, and it doesn't reflect the decision they need three spaces and they have three spaces I will correct the copy on that motion when it goes back out it does not impact the decision and it still stands that they have three and need to maintain three spaces I didn't want there to be any confusion on the public record okay thanks Tom You're anything welcome. else under new business well, before we adjourn, I just wanted to thank you uh, all for uh, your diligence in continuing to run the, um, the borough, uh, working with your committees. Uh, appreciate your first responders uh, that are out there. Thank you for everything that you're doing to um, stay safe and keep us safe. And uh, hopefully we get back to some sense of normal here soon. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I so move. Nino, do we have a second? Joe Colosimo, second. Joe Colosimo, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.